It is so raucous and I love it. Car Obsession is proudly supported by Carly and Draggy. Check out the video description to find out the latest discount codes. Funny, isn't it? This car looks like a classic, it feels like a classic, and it has a raw feed from that wouldn't be out of place in yesteryear, but this is in fact a brand new car. Well, I use the phrase brand new loosely as whilst this car was built recently, using new parts, it looks as if it's been around since the 70s. Well, that's the point of this car. This is the Caterham Super 7 2000. Much like the Super 7 600 I had last week, this has been designed to look even more retro than your average Caterham. In fact, the design ethos has been inspired by Caterham from the 70s and from the 80s. The Super 7 2000 specification gives you exclusive chrome finishes, flared wings, a moto liter steering wheel, swift gauges, and a choice of 11 heritage paints. This car is tobacco brown, which if you ask me, is screaming 70s, isn't it? Talking of screaming 70s, look at these seats. These are called the ginger fluted leather seats and they are an optional extra. Not really to my taste, but it kind of fits in with the specification, doesn't it? I've also got a wood effect dash as well to really make this feel like you're driving a car from yesteryear. Despite having lots of retro charm, underneath the underpinnings of this car, this is actually essentially a 7360. So under the bonnet, I have a two litre naturally aspirated Ford Duratec engine, which if I'm not mistaken, was used in the Mark VI Fiesta ST. Only in this car, it offers more power, 183 horsepower, along with 194 Newton meters of torque. If you prefer that in pound feet, that is 143. Of course, as with any Caterham, power is fed to the rear via a very sweet changing, short, five-speed manual gearbox. Work it quickly enough and you'll roar to 60 miles per hour in just 4.8 seconds. Top speed, if you can hit it, is 130, which in a car like this, which is only around 580 kilograms and you're sat so low down to the tarmac, yes, 130 will feel rather brisk indeed. Now, because I drove the Super 7 600 last week, I can, of course, draw some comparisons. For starters, well, this car has more power and it makes more of a racket as well. It's, oh. Oh, it's glorious. It really, really is. This car is wider because this is built using Caterham's wider chassis as opposed to the standard chassis for the 600, which is um, snug. And the 2000 also has the Dodeon rear axle setup, whereas the 600 has a live rear axle. To put it simply, the Dodeon gives you better ride comfort, it's more compliant. It's, yeah, it's not as crashy when you hit an imperfection or divot in the road. If you're looking for a Caterham that's more comfortable, easier to live with, then I would recommend you go for the wider chassis and also get the lowered floor option as well. If you're tall like me, I'm six foot two. Just gives, gives you a bit of extra space inside, particularly when you have the roof on. Earlier, I mentioned about the rear axle being the Dion as opposed to a live rear axle. Well, let me give you a bit of a practice to show you what I mean. So in the 600, there's a bump down here, which almost catapulted me out of my seat. Now in, in the 2000, you will see 
that it's more compliant. So the bump's coming up, wait for it. Now that was a lot more pleasant. In the 600, you are literally bounced out of your seat. So there we go. The difference between live and the Dion. Yeah. Engineering explained it's got nothing on me. <laughs> this car is another comparison I can make between this and the oh my god that's a Renault 5 GT oh that was glorious I really hope one of my cameras caught that because yeah that was very nice anyway car spotting aside another comparison between this and the 600 is the gearing this this revs out for longer you hit 60 in second gear as opposed to almost fourth gear in the 600. And that your gear change feels slightly, not looser, that sounds bad, but it's not quite as stiff as in the 600. That's neither a compliment or a complaint, it's just an observation. Yes, because this car has got longer gearing and it is naturally aspirated it means you can really rev it out or you can really bring out that two litre Duratec engine and my word what a pleasure it is to do <laughs> right let's talk about the handling well it's a Caterham it does this kind of thing fantastically this has got wider tyres compared to the 600. They are 175 cross section instead of 155. And there's plenty of grip to be had in the corners, even though this hasn't got a limited slip diff. By the way, you can have that as an option. Because the pedals are so close together, you're gonna heel and toe with ease. The brakes are brilliant. The feedback through the pedal is so firm and reassuring. It is absolutely fantastic. Of course, there's no power steering, so you get loads of feedback through the steering wheel, through your fingertips. This thing just eats corners for breakfast and it loves doing it as will you if you're driving the car well even as a passenger you'll enjoy it it's such a visceral experience not quite as frenetic as the 600 where you're always having to work the gearbox because of the short gearing but it's still a car that feels so alive this car has soul it has character. It has something modern cars just can't give you. This car is a proper laugh. It's such a good driver's car. And you know, good is not the right word. It is an epic driver's car. I've said it before, but if you really want the true essence of what driving should be, you have to drive a Caterham. You really do. It's unfiltered unadulterated driving joy oh yes this car feels so meaty the in-gear performance is noticeably stronger compared to the 600 because you have a larger displacement and more torque I think this car is somewhat deceptive because it looks rather quaint and very classic 
in its approach, I don't think you'd really expect this turn of speed. In fact, I took one of my friends out in this the other day, and when I really opened up the taps, she was surprised by how quick this thing is. It's, it's kind of a, uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing, actually. You look at this and go, oh, that's nice. Are you driving your granddad's car? And then you just wait for a car to move out of your way like this. And then you completely open the taps. I mean, it seems almost ludicrous that you have this pace in a car with this exterior styling. It feels like a bit of a mismatch if you ask me. You look at this car and you think this, this is more for cruising. Nice sunny summer's day, a nice sunny Sunday, a little cruise down to your local pub in the uh, countryside and then have a nice cruise home, but no. It's power, it's like a sledgehammer. And the Super 7 600 was a bit of a mismatch as well because, again, you've got that classic styling. Then you had this turbo flutter as the backing soundtrack. All a bit bizarre. It's not a bad thing. It's just a quirky thing to behold. I love the mirrors in a Caterham because they almost seem like an afterthought. The rear view mirror is shaking so violently that I can barely make out that GR Supra behind me. And the door mirrors, I mean, what's going on there? They flap about like a dog's ears when it's got its head out of a car window. And they're always moving. This one, for example, I keep adjusting and it keeps moving so all I can really see is myself. I mean, if I was vain, that'd be quite handy, but yeah, just all part of the charms of a Caterham. <laughs> like any Caterham, the Super 7 2000 is great fun to drive, but I do have an issue with the price. With a starting price of £39,990, this is £2,500 more than the 360 on which it is based on, whereas the Super 7 600 is only a grand more than the 170 on which it is based on. Because of this, the Super 7 2000 could well be more of a niche option. The 2000 was the easier, more comfortable car to live with, but the 600 somehow seemed to be more of an event. Maybe the turbo and the somewhat frenetic gearing are to thank for that. As much as the Super 7 2000 is an interesting model and one that will appeal to those of a more nostalgic mindset, I think the majority of you would be better off getting the 360 and either saving the money or using the difference that you've saved towards options. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video guys or found it useful. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time guys, be sure to keep up the car. Obsession.